mind activities or places that trigger memories of the event. We can become socially isolated and withdrawn, and lose interest in things we used to enjoy. Post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, may cause us to be easily startled, edgy, have impaired function during sex or other activities, or unusually alert to potential danger. Overwhelming fear, anxiety, detachment and isolation, shame, and anger may become background states of our activities. Many other effects of trauma may be triggered by social interactions, work, or metadata. Dash. Tion. Areas that may be completely disconnected from the original events. Race-based trauma, as well as trauma from any experience of discrimination or bigotry, can accumulate over a lifetime. When these incidents are considered separately, they might appear manageable, but when experienced cumulatively, they can become extremely difficult to cope with the distress, fear, and physical body responses that may arise. From this kind of trauma often overlap with the symptoms of PTSD. Trauma and attachment injury can lead to the fear, anger, angst, dash, IAT, guilt, and loneliness that are common responses to various life X, dash, experiences. But, at a deeper level, trauma makes it harder for us to cope. In general, to form healthy or safe relationships, to develop an identity, in the world, are to defend ourselves. No two of us will react to the same experience in the same way, but this truth points to the fact that certain past experiences can affect our responses later in life. This is key to under dash standing dukkha and to meeting our experience with wise boundaries. Compassion, kindness, and courage rather than judgment for others and ourselves which is an essential part of recovery. Many of us turn to addictive substances and behaviors as a way to cope with our trauma, sometimes running from the pain of our experiences by way of our addictions is itself a survival technique from feeling that we wouldn't be able to live through the pain of our memories. While this may have provided some temporary relief, it did nothing to actually heal the pain of our trauma, and often led to even more pain. Our trauma is not our fault, but healing from it is our response Dash, ability, and our right. Developing understanding and compassion toward the way trauma affects our reactions to events or circumstances in the present moment is an important part of that healing. Inquiry of the First Noble Truth colon, Begin by making a list of the behaviors and actions associated with your addictions that you consider harmful. Without exaggerating or minimizing, think about the things you have done that have created additional suffering to yourself and others. For each behavior listed, write how you and others have suffered because of that behavior. List any other costs or negative consequences you can think of, such as finances, health, relationships, sexual relations, or missed offer. Dash. Tunities. Do you notice any patterns? What are they? What are the ways that you might avoid or reduce suffering for yourself and others if you change these patterns? How have 
your addictive behavior has been a response to trauma and pain. What are some ways you can respond to trauma and pain that nurture healing rather than avoidance? If you have experienced trauma from discrimination, what are ways you can experience healing and practice self-care? Consider offer dash opportunities to support social justice while allowing yourself to heal and practice compassion for yourself and others. The second noble truth, the cause of suffering. As people who have become dependent on substances and meat, dash, behaviors, we've all experienced the sense of failure and hopelessness that comes from trying and failing to let go of our fixations. Addiction itself increases our suffering by creating a hope that both pleasure and escape can be permanent. We go through this suffering again and again because substances or behaviors can only give us temporary relief to our pain, our unhappiness, and our lost or damaged sense of self. Our refusal to accept the way things are leads to wanting, or crap, dash, ing, which is the cause of suffering. This excludes discrimination-based suffering and harm which do not need to be accepted, but met with wise boundaries, wise action, and compassion. We don't suffer because of the way things are, but because we want, or think we, need those things to be different. We suffer because we cling to the idea that we can satisfy our own cravings, while ignoring the true nature of the world around us. Above all, we cling to the idea that we can hold on to impermanent and unreliable things, things that can't ever lead to real sad, dash, dispaction or lasting happiness, without experiencing the suffering of one day losing them. Clinging to impermanent solutions for suffering results in crap. Dash. King. We experience craving like a thirst, an unsatisfied longing, and it can become a driving force in our lives. If craving goes beyond simple desire, which is a natural part of life, it often leads us to fixation, obsession, and the delusional belief that we can't be happy without getting what we crave, it morphs our intentions so that we make choices that harm our dash selves and others. This repetitive craving and obsessive drive to satisfy it leads to what we now know as addiction. Addiction occupies the part of our mind that chooses our will, and replaces compassion, kindness, generosity, honesty, and other intentions that might have been there. Many of us experience addiction as the loss of our freedom to choose, it's the addiction that seems to be making our choices for us, in the way we, must have, who, shelter, or water, our mind can tell us we must have some substance, buy or steal something, satisfy some lust, keep acting until we achieve some needed result that we must protect ourselves at all costs and attack people with whom we diss. Dash agree, are people who have something we want. This, me, also leads to an unsettled or agitated state of mind that tells us we'll only be happy if we get certain results or feel a certain way. We want to be someone we're not, or we don't want to be who we are. Conditions or circumstances in and of themselves don't cause 
suffering. They can cause pain or unpleasant experiences, but we add suffering on top of this when we think we need those circumstances to be different. We create even more suffering when we act out in ways that deny the reality of the circumstances and the reality of impermanence. Craving is the underlying motive that fuels unwise actions that create suffering. Inquiry of the Second Noble Truth. Colon. List situations, circumstances, and feelings that you have used harm. Dash. Full behavior to try to avoid. Name the emotions, sensations, and thoughts that come to mind. When you abstain, are there troubling memories, shame, grief, or unmet needs behind the craving? How can you meet these with calm, dash, passion and patience? What things did you give up in your clinging to impermanent and unreliable solutions? For example, did you give up relationships, by, dash, Financial security, health, opportunities, legal standing, or other I am. Dash. Important things to maintain your addictive behaviors. What made the addiction more important to you than any of these things you gave? Up. Are you clinging to any beliefs that fuel craving and aversion? Beliefs that deny the truth of impermanence? Our beliefs about how things in life should be what are they if you have experienced this formation based trauma or social injury dash type how can you meet the experience in a way that honors your true self without creating more pain and suffering the third noble truth ending the suffering it is possible to end our suffering when we come to understand the nature of our craving and realize that all our experiences are tempo dash rary by nature we can begin a more skillful way to live with the visit dash is faction that is part of being human we don't need to be torn apart by our thoughts and feelings that say, I have to have more of that, or, I'll do anything to get rid of this. The third noble truth states that the end of craving is possible. Each of us has the capacity for recovery. We are responsible for our own actions and for for the energy we give our thoughts and feelings. This means we have some control over how we respond to our own suffering, because the unpleasant emotions take place within us. We create them through our response to experience. We don't need to depend on anyone or anything else to remove the causes of our suffering. We may not be able to control anything, out there, but we can learn to choose what we think, say, and do. We come to under, dash, stand that if our thoughts, words, and actions are driven by grief, hatred, or confusion, we are creating suffering within suffering. If we let go of these attitudes, we can lessen suffering or even create freedom. We can choose to give up these causes of disturbing and unpleasant emotions. This is the true empowerment and freedom. Freedom of recovery, Recog recognizing that happiness and suffering are up to us, based on how we choose to respond to our experience. experiences.
Inquiry of the Third Noble Truth. Colon. What makes it so hard to quit? What resources are available to help you abstain and recover? List reasons to believe you can recover. Also list your doubts. What? Might the wise and compassionate part of you, your Buddha Na, dash, Ture, say about these doubts? Practice, letting go, of something small. Notice that the craving, doesn't last and that there's a little sense of relief when you let it pass. That's a little taste of freedom. The fourth noble truth, the path. The Buddha taught that by living ethically, practicing metta, dash, tion, and developing wisdom and compassion, we can end the suffering. We create by resisting, running from, and misunderstanding reality. The fourth noble truth is the path that summarizes the S. Dash. Sential elements to recovery, or awakening, and leads to the ending of suffering. It provides an instructive practice for investigating and become Dash. Being aware of the conditioned responses we cling to. These are the eight factors of the path. 1. Wise understanding. 2. Wise intention. 3. Wise speech. 4. Wise action. 5. Wise livelihood. 6. Wise effort. 7. Wise mindfulness. 8. Wise concentration. These eight factors can be divided into three groups. The wisdom group of understanding and intention. The ethics group of speech, action, and livelihood. The concentration group of effort, mindfulness, and concentration. Each of us will understand and practice each aspect of this. Eightfold path in our own way. We develop our wisdom, ethical practice, and concentration as far as we can in any given moment. As we come to a deeper understanding of the Four Noble Truths, we're able to bring more effort and concentration to letting go of our greed, hatred, and confusion. Our ethical development will cause us to reflect more deeply on these sources of our unwise actions. The Eightfold Path is a way of life that each of us follow follows and practices to the best of our current understanding and capacity. The Path can serve as both a religious and non-religious journey. For many people, their Buddhist practice includes prayer, worship, and ceremony. It is up to you to decide whether to include these practices as part of your recovery path. Inquiry of the Fourth Noble Truth. Colon. Understanding that recovery and the ending of suffering is possible. What is your path to recovery and ending the suffering of addiction? Be honest about the challenges you might face, and the tools and resources you will use to meet those challenges. What behaviors can you change to more fully support your recovery? What does it mean to you to take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha for your recovery? The Eightfold Path. We found that it's useful to make inquiry and investigation. A normal part of our everyday routine, especially when we're feeling none. Dash. Comfortable emotions are facing tough decisions. We can take a moment to pause and sit with what we're experiencing, identify it, and simply allow it to be with compassion and without judgment. Then use the 
Eightfold path is a guide to go. Go inward and forward by asking ourselves, how can I apply the Eightfold path? It can also be beneficial to me. Use the different sections of the Eightfold path as an end of day reflection. Wise understanding. As we we engage in the world, rather than withdraw from it, we can use wise understanding to live without clinging, attachment, or craving. By paying attention to our actions, Actions and the results of those actions, we can begin to change where our choices are leading. If we intend to act in ways that have positive results, and if we're aware of the true intention and the nature of our actions, then we'll see better results, better meaning less suffering and less harm. The word karma in Sanskrit translates to what our actions pre dash eight any intentional act mental verbal or physical is a kind of karma skillful or wise actions strengthen our sense of balance kindness compassion loving and equanimity when we act unskillfully or run dash Wisely, when we steal, lie, take advantage of somebody else, or cause intentional harm based on our own craving or delusions, it creates an immediate sense of imbalance. It fights with our intention to avoid harming others. Karma is determined by our intention and applies to any volitional or purposeful action. The result of our volitional actions may be an increase in our happiness or may lead to additional suffering. There is no actor apart from action, and there is no action without intention. Unskillful actions leave us less able to meet the next challenge or pain we face. For example, when we steal, we have to immediately justify to ourselves why our greed was more important than the harm we caused. By taking, we must create a cover story, hide our actions, and adjust to the fear of getting caught. Ultimately, if the theft gets discovered, we might have to deal with financial or legal consequences, or face a lack of trust from our community. Similarly, when we're dishonest, we immediately focus energy on maintaining the untruth. We must emotionally carry the potential pain that is caused to others and ourselves if the lie is revealed. This understanding of karma rests on the insight that we are responsible for our own happiness and misery, and there is a cause to every experience of happiness or misery. From a Buddhist point of view, our choices, which are dependent on our present mental, moral, in, dash, intellectual, and emotional conditions, decide the effects of our actions. If we act skillfully, with understanding and compassion, it's possible to cause positive, beneficial effects for ourselves and others. If we act with unskillful intention, we cause our own suffering. This doesn't mean that we always have control over our XP. Dash. Alliances. No matter how skillfully we act, the external world, people, places, things, societal structures, might
might not give us what we want. This does not mean we have bad karma or that we failed. It just means that we're not in control of everything and everyone. The point is that regardless of what the outside world throws at us, we're responsible for how we respond to it and how we tend to our internal world. At the end of the day, we have a choice whether we go to bed as some dash body who acted wisely and compassionately, or as somebody who didn't. It's important to note that being responsible for our own half dash Happiness and suffering doesn't mean we're responsible for pain inflicted on us by others or by, by circumstances out of our control. Many of us have experiences of victimization, oppression, and trauma through no fault of our own. The pain from these experiences should be met with compass. Dash, scion, understanding, and wise boundaries, not minimized, invalidated, or pushed away. In recovery, we learn that we don't have to add an extra layer of suffering to this pain. We can begin to heal rather than let these experiences or the action of others control and limit us. Without this, Dash. Counting or ignoring the ongoing effects of trauma in our lives, we begin to understand that our responses when that trauma comes up for us can change our experience of suffering and happiness. The Buddhist perspective is that our present mental, moral, in dash intellectual, and emotional circumstances are the direct result of our AC. Dash. Tions and habits, both past and present. How we choose to respond when confronted with pain or discomfort will change our ability to skillfully deal with suffering when it arises. We can also take solace in the fact that we're not alone that every person has difficult and unpleasant experience. Dash. S. It's how we respond to pain that determines our experience. Inquiry of wise understanding. Think of a situation in your life that is causing confusion or run. Dash. Ease. 1. What is the truth of this situation? 2. Are you seeing clearly, or are you getting lost in judgment? Taking things personally in stories you're telling yourself, or repeating past messages you've internalized. How? 3. Is your vision clouded by greed, hate, hatred, confusion, clinging, attachment, or craving? How? In what situations and parts of your life do you have the most to be? Dash. Culty separating wants from needs. Are there areas or relationships? Where the drive to get what you desire overshadows any other? Other concept. Dash. Duration. Has this changed since you began or continue in recovery? Are there parts of your life where you are driven to continue on please? Dash. And experiences because you think you must or need to. How is karma, the law of cause and effect, showing up right now? Where in your life are you dealing with the effects or aftermath of action you took in the past, both positive and negative? Wise intention. Wise intention to...